on, man. Wake up. Come on. Like when I, when I, when I, guys, always I say this, you short that video and put whatever you want. When I say I don't want to fight Mexican, it's because I represent Mexico. And that's why. But I don't care. I fight anybody. And I fight all, my entire life, anybody. What do you think? I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to fight with one Mexico or Benavides. But I look. I, I hear his dad talking a lot of shit. But look, what he's, a, look, he's accomplished, nothing. One single champion, Anthony Derrell. Please, don't disrespect myself. Please, guys. So the last time we caught up with Canelo Alvarez and asked him about fighting the winner of Benavidez versus Andre, you guys heard what he said. He didn't want to answer the question. Before that, when Canelo was asked about fighting Benavidez, since Benavidez has been heavily calling him out, Canelo Alvarez said, he fought with nobody. Payday, he won payday, I know that. Then Canelo put the icing on the cake by claiming he doesn't want to fight Benavidez because he doesn't fight Mexican fighters. He doesn't fight his people. Well, ironically, every single excuse by Canelo already got debunked. Canelo want to claim Benavidez hasn't fought anyone. Well, this year alone, Benavidez already beat Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andre back to back in pay-per-view fights. Canelo want to claim Benavidez want to fight him for the payday. However, the truth is, David Benavidez got paid more to fight Andre then he would have had got paid to fight Canelo. That's right. Benavidez was willing to take the minimum to fight Canelo Alvarez. He told Al Heyman, give Canelo all of the money. Offer Canelo Alvarez all of the money. That's why Canelo Alvarez got offered 55 million guaranteed plus pay-per-view to fight David Benavidez. Ultimately, Canelo Alvarez could have got paid. 100 million plus to face David Benavidez if the fight does well on pay-per-view which we know it will because this is two Mexican fighters going at each other on a Mexican holiday this is like Barrera Morales at 168 who is not gonna tune in but that's beside the point the main point here is when Canelo was saying payday 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 the only one that was getting paid for real for real is Canelo if he fought Benavidez. For the people that don't know, David Benavidez got paid more to fight Andre than he would have had got paid to fight Canelo. The reason why, when Benavidez was negotiating with Andre, he wanted his maximum in order to fight the dangerous Andre. However, when it came to fighting Canelo, Benavidez was willing to take his minimum to fight Canelo Alvarez. Meaning, Benavidez was going to make less money than he got paid for the Andrade fight to fight Canelo. That's why it makes no sense at all when Canelo says Benavidez only wants to fight him for the payday. Well, ironically, Benavidez got paid more to fight Andre than he will get paid to fight Canelo. Because Canelo is going to get all of the money. I believe the percentage split is like... 90% to 10%. If that. Additionally, Canelo can't claim Benavidez is a boring fighter because, ironically, Benavidez is a more exciting fighter than Canelo. Last but not least, when it comes to Canelo's excuse of him not wanting to fight Mexican fighters because that's his people. Well, half of Canelo's record is Mexican fighters. On top of that, why didn't Canelo say that when he fought Chavez Jr. on pay-per-view more recently? Why Canelo didn't say that when he fought Angulo or a blown-up Josecito Lopez? Notice how Canelo only says that, him not fighting Mexican fighters, only when he's talking about David Benavidez. Since, ironically, Canelo Alvarez is in serious negotiations to fight a Mexican fighter next. 
in Jaime Munguia. What happened to Canelo Alvarez not wanting to fight Mexican fighters anymore? One thing in common between Canelo and Munguia is that they both ducked Benavidez. On top of that, they both ducked Andre. When it came to Munguia, he didn't just turn down a Benavidez fight more recently. On top of that, Munguia turned down four offers as the mandatory to fight Andre at 160 for the WBO title. Do you guys know Munguia was a mandatory for years at 160 and he never became a champ because every time he got offered to fight the champ, Andre or even Jamal, he turned them fights down. Why? Because he said he's not ready despite the fact he has 40 fights and he's 26, 27 years old. This is why it's funny when I see the Canelo fans in the comment section trying to trash the boogeyman Demetrius Andre, the guy who Munguia and Canelo ducked. The same guy Canelo Alvarez ducked for an entire decade. At 154, at 160, and at 168 in three different divisions. Canelo Alvarez made history ducking Andre. When Canelo was campaigning at 154, he was the mandatory for Demetrius Andre. Do you guys know he turned down that fight multiple times? He ducked Andre at 154. On top of that, Canelo Alvarez ducked Andre at 160 for undisputed. It was a unification for Canelo to become undisputed after Canelo said out of his own mouth, his dream was to become the first Mexican undisputed middleweight champion. But as soon as Demetrius Andre became the WBO champion leading up to him fighting Billy Joe Saunders, who tested positive for steroids, all of a sudden Canelo changed his mind about becoming undisputed because he turned down the undisputed fight against Andre for his biggest payday at the time, 40 million guaranteed from the zone. Check it out. Canelo, congratulations on your victory, Canelo. My my question for you is, uh, I know you mentioned, uh, or maybe it was, uh, I'm not sure, somebody on your team mentioned about the prospect that you won another title that is held by Demetrius Andre, who has the fight in June, so maybe you said it was a little too close to your September date. Putting the fact that he's fighting in June aside, can you give me your thoughts about the possibility of a fight against Demetrius Andre and the prospect of becoming the undisputed champion? Sí, no, el que tenga el título, eso es lo que queremos, queremos el título. Eh... Y, y pues obviamente ese es el objetivo, ¿no? Vamos a sentarnos con nuestro equipo a ver qué es lo que viene, pero el objetivo es ganar los cuatro títulos en peso medio. Yes, that's the goal. Look, whoever has the title, doesn't matter. Our goal is to unify all the belts, become the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. We're going to sit with our, champ, our team and we'll come back with a decision. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely night. Gracias. Gracias a todos. And it ain't no secret, at 168, Canelo Alvarez stole David Benavidez's belt like a thief, then ducked Andre and Benavidez at 168 yet again. Do you guys know Canelo Alvarez turned down five different offers for his biggest payday every single time, till this day, to fight David Benavidez? We're not talking about one offer. We're not talking about two, three. We're talking about five. Canelo turned down five different offers to fight David Benavidez. This is a fact. This is not up for debate. Canelo Alvarez ducked Andre for an entire decade, and he has been ducking David Benavidez for a half a decade already. If this is not making history, I don't know what is. Canelo is making history for becoming the ultimate duck in the sport of boxing. Canelo should change his theme to no duck and no life for Canelo Alvarez. The way David Benavidez beat Demetrius Andre, a dangerous, slick, awkward fighter, is the reason why Canelo has been ducking David Benavidez from day one. So I guess because the boogeyman decided to fight each other and that's Benavidez and Andre, now the ducks wanna fight each other as well. Canelo and Munguia are deciding to have a duck off to see who is the best duck in the world. Look, man, at the end of the day, Canelo can't claim he's the best fighter in the world when he continues to duck the best fighters in the world in and around his weight classes. 
Forget about being the best in the world. Canelo is not even the best 168 pounder because that's clearly David Benavidez. He's the king of the 168 pound division, the champ of the people with or without a belt. Remember, David Benavidez is an undefeated fighter who has been a champion since he was 20 years old. Benavidez has been challenging everyone, calling out everyone. He's 26 now. Benavidez has been proving himself for six years already. So like Andre said, Canelo needs to grow the cojones and fight the Mexican monster that the fans, the media members, and the legendary fighters, all of the champions are asking him to do. That's the fight they want to see. And that's the fight they want Canelo to fight next. No excuses. No more excuses. We don't want to see Canelo fight Munguia. Absolutely not. Ironically, all of the excuses Canelo Alvarez made in order to avoid the David Benavidez fight, all of those excuses apply to Munguia. Munguia haven't fought anyone. Munguia only wants a payday. This, that, and the third. Munguia is full Mexican. Unlike Benavidez, who's only half Mexican. So Canelo Alvarez needs to say all of that to Jaime Munguia instead of David Benavidez. We don't want to see Canelo fight Jamal Charlo either, who was struggling and couldn't even knock out a blown up welterweight. A 140 pounder and Jose Benavidez was putting hands on Jamal Charlo, who missed weight and came in at 166. They were like multiple divisions apart. Even then, Jose Benavidez was putting hands on Jamal Charlo. If you didn't know any better, you would have thought Jamal Charlo was fighting David Benavidez. That's how bad he looked. So that will be a coward move, respectfully, by Canelo to fight Jamal Charlo or Jaime Munguia next. Instead of David Benavidez, if so, the WBC needs to strip Canelo Alvarez of his WBC title as soon as possible, especially when David Benavidez has been ranked as the number one contender and the mandatory since COVID, which means Benavidez has been the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez at 168 for three years already, fighting in title eliminator fights one after another. This gotta stop. The corruption has to stop. Canelo Alvarez has to step down from being the WBC president of the world. Mauricio Suleiman needs to get his throne and tag back. Well, Benavidez is gonna help him get back there. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continued on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.